The Dear Agency specializes in helping you understand your coverage before you need it. We offer all lines of personal and commercial insurance, including auto, home, and life. Contact Don Deere at 210-507-2169 and visit us at 7529 North Loop 1604 in Live Oak, Texas or FarmersAgent.com slash DDeer. Are you pregnant and alone? You have options. The Sanctuary of Hope offers expectant mothers ages 12 to 22 a place to live, medical care, counseling, continued education, and options to raise your baby in a loving environment or help you with adoption. We want to help provide you and your baby with a bright future. Call us or email us today and let's walk through this together. 210-499-1554 or sohcares.org. All inquiries are confidential. Hey, this is I Am Refocus Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed, and we're going to be talking to a music artist all the way from Louisiana. Yeah, she goes by Marjan, and we're going to learn all about her and her music, and also she has a powerful story about her faith and how her great-grandmother helped shape her life. So sit back and relax and enjoy today's show. You are listening to I Am Refocus Radio. I Am Refocused Radio is brought to you by Documation, service that serves. Technology solutions to keep you moving forward. Visit nation.com today. You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. Today we have another show lined up for you. And we're going to be talking to a music artist out in Louisiana. She goes by Marjan. the show and we're gonna learn all about you today well hello you guys so first things first tell people a little bit about yourself before we get into all the great things that you do in the music industry Mm -hmm. take us back let us know about marjan and what was life like growing up oh man good question okay so let's start here i'll start with my great-grandmother so i was raised by my great-grandmother um, in a small country, rural area by the name of Newton, Louisiana. Um, it's pronounced, I mean, it's still like New Welton, but uh, pronounced Newton. Population of about, what, 937 people? Graduating class of 33 students. So, yeah, that's how small it was. But um, raised in love by my great-grandmother due to some unfortunate circumstances back home. But I had a definitely good childhood. I didn't explore much, you know, because I was in the country. But um, as I got older, I ended up, you know, getting out of the city and exploring a little bit more. Got to college and opened up a whole new world of possibilities. More about myself, I'll say that I'm very peaceful. I'll, I'll describe myself as a peacemaker. Very loving, kind, gentle, and yeah, just all around driven and motivated. And you have used your gifts in music to be involved in a local church and, you know, community youth choir. So tell us about some of that, man. How, how did you start, you know, getting involved in, you know, church and other communities using your your voice? Yeah, like I said, raised by my great-grandmother, she played piano. So she was lead singer, church choir director, all of that good stuff. And you know how when you were younger— um, your parents, they like to, you know, showcase uh, their grandbabies. And so she always did that for me. She, I guess she realized that I had a ear for music. So she would just tell company, hey, my grandbaby can do this. And she would have me bang on the piano. I didn't hit many keys. But as I got older, I just learned how to play by ear through her. And so, of course, I was raised in the church, a missionary Baptist church at that And so um, I was in the church choir for a very, very long time. And then when I think about when I was 10 or 11, 
One of the church members decided to do a community youth choir. So instead of it just being one church, which was my church, it had all of the churches that were in our community. We all came together and we had a group of about, I want to say about 20, 20, 20 to 25 choir members. And um, we just all got together and we would travel. And I remember our first show was uh, the Ernie Miles show. I don't know if you guys remember or if it still airs, but we went there. We had a good time and we just kind of got out. And so after that, kind of um, subdued with the choir. And then as I got older, I said I wanted to give back to the community. And of course, I had my own little youth choir, <laughs> a little baby. But yeah, so I just used that voice to kind of let people know it's good. It's good to serve God. And it's good to get your voice. Even if you can't sing, just come, you know, come along and take the initiative and just be a part of something great because you never know what that small little motivation can do for the next person who's out there sitting in a pew or if they see you traveling around. So, yeah. And for those listening right now, what part of Louisiana was all this taking place? Norton, Louisiana. So shout out to them because what was amazing is we had people coming in and out you know, in the show and, and so many different stories, but there's always, in my opinion, a common thread. And that is mm-hmm. there's been good people in people's lives that help influence them. And in your right, case, right. your great grandmother played a heavy role in setting the tone as far as how you approach music. So what yes. are some of the things that you've noticed as you were growing in your career? Because we're going to get to the gigs that you used to do with your best friend and all that good stuff. But before we get there, what were some of the things that helped shape your music career appetite? Oh, I would just say, um, in a nutshell, just just the love, the love for music. I didn't grow up in one of those households where your parents would be playing when they were cleaning and things of that nature. But being in church, just being in church and hearing those sounds, hearing harmonies, like I just, I just grew a love for music in general is almost like a language for me. You know what I'm saying? So some people, when I listen to music, it doesn't matter how I'm feeling at that moment. I feel like I can relate in some way, shape, or form. So I'm just going to say love in general, the love for music has shaped the way my career has moved forward. And you went to college, so you educated. You went to college, you Louisiana <laughs> State University. And yes. you grew even further in your music because, you know, one of your best friends, Chase Warner, y'all would do some mm-hmm. small gigs. So tell right. us about that when you started to experience the audience as far as performing in small gigs and, you know, on campus and stuff. Okay, so it all stemmed from um, Instagram. Let's start there. And that's been a very powerful tool. So got an Instagram in 2012. So back then... You know, I would just post pictures of random stuff. And then I finally decided I want to do like little mini covers, you know, singing someone's song and kind of putting my own spin to it. And also playing the piano. I used to have a a little segment called um, One Handed Chords, where I would just play chords with one hand just to go along with the song. So people would see that. And once I got to college, they took note and I, I guess they understood who I was and what I did. And so um, my best friend Chase, he sings as well. And so at that point in time, I wasn't singing much. I kind of, I was like, I can hold a tune in the bucket. But um, I didn't want to be the forefront, you know, because I'm a little shy. But as I said, I play piano. So we meshed really, really, really well. We became best friends quickly. And we would play, I would play piano and he would sing. We would do it in my dorm room. And so um, I believe it was this guy by the name of Montorius Howard. He had asked us to perform on, for a gig on campus. I want to say it was the NAACP event, I think, in Image Awards or something that we had on campus. And so that was my first time actually getting in front of a group of people, or so many people. I was very nervous, but everything went so well. The love was amazing. And, yeah, and from that point on, we just, did other events on campus. We actually both joined the choir, um, the LSU uh, choir at school. So, yeah, we just did events around campus, went to different churches with our uh, LSU choir. And moments ago, you said you can hold a tune in the bucket. 
Well, I think I can hold two on the floor because it's a mess. So I'm not going <laughs> to even touch that, man. But after college, you kept growing. You kept progressing in your goals mm-hmm. as far as trying to get in the music industry. Kind of tapped into songwriting. Tell us about that. Yeah. Okay, so best friends are a huge motivating factor in my life. I actually met now my roommate. We met about three years ago, and she was heavy into writing. You know, I always did music. I always wanted to, like, produce slash engineer, kind of just learning through YouTube and things like that. But I was never big on songwriting. In high school, I did poetry. I did a lot of writing uh, in high school. But songwriting is kind of just a little different for me. Um, it's like I can come up with a concept, but actually finishing out is just kind of difficult at times. So when I met my best friend, she actually writes a lot. I mean, from plays to songs, poetry, what have you, stories. And she became my roommate. I was telling her about music. She never really got into music like that, but she had a love for music as well. So I would just play beats, and she's like, you need to start writing. We both just just get in and kind of bounce ideas off of each other and just kind of stem from there. So my process for writing is just a little lengthy um, in terms of what I need to do, but it all stems from from my best friend, you know, just kind of guiding me and helping me with songwriting. And once again, you listen to I and Refocus Radio. We are talking to music artist Marjan, and she's from Louisiana, representing Louisiana, man. And man, Louisiana. I was, I'm not going to drop no name brands, but I, I was thinking about some food. So forgive me. About that. <laughs> now, I know that was so random in the interview, but I'm just saying. It's all when, good. It's all good. When you are seeing the progress, of yourself, not just as a music artist, but as an individual, because music artists are similar to athletes. Some people think mm-hmm. that's all they can do, but that's not mm-hmm. the case. They're able to do so many things. I mean, you went to college, you got your education, you're involved with your community. What are some of the things that you believe help prep you for your opportunity? But what are some of the things you feel prep you along the way? to help you get the opportunities that you're getting today? Going back to my great-grandmother, um, yeah, she's like a huge staple in, in the way my life has been shaped because, like I said, everything is based off of love. And when she passed away, my uh, my grandmother, she moved from California uh, to continue raising me. So it's just from an early age, I feel like I was just grounded in love and just helping people regardless of the way people treat you. And I just feel like that's a huge factor um, of how I build relationships with people. So I um, was just talking to a guy the other day, and he said, your net worth is your net worth. So I really honed in on that because I'm like, me being the person that I am, it's like I feel like I'm very easygoing. And just building those relationships, having those conversations, talking to different people, letting them know what you do, that's been more than enough, like, opening um, those opportunities and those doors for me. It's building relationships with my friends, with their friends, with family members, extended family members. That goes a long way. When people see that you're truly, like, a loving person, um, they just want good for you. And, And God continues to bless those who do right by others. So, that's what I firmly believe in. And, yeah, I feel like being grounded in love, once again, has, has set the tone for me being able to um, explore these different opportunities as far as, like, my music career and just helping others in general. And when you are in this position where now you're pretty much, you got the stove hot, you got music coming out, and mm-hmm. we're getting to the, the focal point of this breaking news interview. <laughs> Tell us <laughs> about your new project and mm-hmm. tell us everything that that entails the details as far as what inspired you to do this project. All the details. So um, inspiration, honestly, it's just me for so long. I have been wanting to like officially drop something. Um, I know a lot of people think, okay, well, you have a song on SoundCloud, um, and which SoundCloud is is very big. Like, it's where artists, you know, typically blow for the most part. But I wanted to get something, like, out there on all platforms because not everybody uh, listens to SoundCloud. So about two years ago, 
you know, everyone knows that I love music and people have just been like, you know, just go for it, go for it, go for it. But going back to me being shy, I haven't graduated from shy school just yet. Um, but just those voices, people just being behind me, knowing that I have the support, I was like, I was going to go for it. And then um, about two years ago, I started working on the project. And so it came from me finding this beat. Um, actually, uh, what was the name of the, I can't even think of the name of the beat, but I found a beat that I really, really, really liked. And I was like, I want to do something over this. And I created a melody and I found an engineer that I absolutely love and I vibe with. And so I went to the studio and we made our first song and I was like, okay, yes, I want to go for it. I want to go for it. And so initially the EP was supposed to drop last November, um, but you know how things are when you don't feel like something is complete. I was like, no, this is not it. This is not it. So fast forward, um, I started coming up with more concepts and I thought about it. I was like, I want to tell the story of um, my quote unquote college life as well. The love story of my quote unquote college life slash my friend's college life. So the lyrics are not just, you know, lyrics from myself. They're about other relationships that people have come to me about, you know, just needing advice on. So it's kind of all of that in one. And I, I'm, I'm not really an outspoken person when it comes to um, relationships and things like that. So I kind of wanted to open myself up through that project. And so, again, my best friend that I was telling you about that helped me with songwriting, she actually helped me co-write most of the songs on the track. And I just feel like everything worked out, you know, so smoothly and um yeah it was a long process and then okay yeah yeah actually uh COVID came around and um I was like yeah I'm really gonna do this now because you know I feel like people need this type of energy in the midst of everything that's going on so yeah that's kind of really what motivated me it was called waiting and then the project uh is called unsaid so there you go and you can get this on all major platforms yes all major platforms so for the artists out there who are hungry and they are listening to this episode right now and they're like man i like what she's doing what advice does she have for the artists out there in the creative world how do you approach the music industry i know that's a big question but in your yes. own experience what words of wisdom will you give artists out there who are trying to be heard in this saturated okay. music industry Number one, I would say use your resources. Whatever resources that you have, whatever people you know, use your resources. That's a big thing. Um, use social media. Social media is huge now. Sometimes it has its cons, um, but you can use it to where your pros outweigh those cons. So use your social media uh, platforms, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, what have you. Twitch, they have so many out there that different people are on. We are all different individuals. So don't just hone in on one. Try to tap into most of them. Another thing is be flexible. I actually, back in my college days, I wasn't very, very organized. But now I am honing more so in on getting organized and being flexible because people will be reaching out. People will be trying to connect with you. And you have to have that um, availability um, just to be open for other artists to connect with you. Have those conversations. Put yourself in those spaces. And don't be afraid. That's where I initially got stuck. I was so scared, so still shy, but I'm, I'm not going to say I'm scared anymore. I'm, I'm going to go for it, i.e. with this interview. I was telling how I was just so nervous about doing everything, but just go for it because only you are stopping you. And you wouldn't believe how many people you actually have uh, rooting for you. Don't worry about the ones that you feel like are hating, whatnot. That's, that's neither here or there. Hone in on yourself, love God, ask God to guide you, pray day in and day out, and just go for it. And what's real cool about your, your artwork for your song, Waiting, you know, is, is you with the pen and paper. Now, yes. tell us about that. What's the story behind that, that spin on, on your artwork? When I get in the studio, I just try to find a beat that I like. I don't have a set producer just yet. So I, I literally go on my computer, browse on YouTube, and um, I discovered this beat. I uh, forgot the name of it, but it reminded me so much of Tamia 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. Tamia, officially missing you. So it kind of had that, it set that tone. And I was like, I love this, I love this, but I want to do my own take on it. So I actually um, sent it to my nephew. My nephew does music, so I was like, you like this? He's like, yeah. He kind of helped me out with some melodies, and we both just kind of buy through uh, text messaging. Again, reach out to your resources. So we started vibing with the song. Um, again, my best friend came in. We all just collabed, and officially missing you is kind of like from Tamia, from a standpoint of it's like, wow, I really miss you. The take I went with, um, it's like I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting for everything to go right. However, um, everything that I thought would, everything that you said, you know, just went down the drain. And I feel like that happens for a lot of uh, relationships nowadays because no one's traditional anymore, and which that's not, that's not a bad thing because, again, we are all individuals. But we find ourselves in positions now where we feel like we're waiting on, uh, waiting on someone, something. Um, and, again, I feel like you should just go for it. So that's kind of where that song stemmed from. It's got a happy, happy beat, but the lyrics are more so sad. So that's another twist. Uh, that was on it that I really enjoyed. So people are actually singing about their quote unquote hurt feelings, but in a happy mood. So I kind of wanted to set the tone there. Once again, we're talking to music artist Marjan, and y'all don't forget that name because I have a very strong feeling that there's going to be a lot of producers that's going to want to work with you. I think people are going to be I like, man, that. who's this? Who's who's this artist, man? Oh man, yeah, because you know what happens. <laughs> People, they hear something new and their yeah. ears start getting mm -hmm. itchy. Like, wow, when's that next project about to drop? So this is going to be the burning question. People are like, man, it's about time you got to it. Are you <laughs> having new music coming out in the near future? Yes, yes. I have um, a few songs in the works right now. Um, called, one is Called You Out. The second one is Blame Me. So the whole EP was about kind of like an unsaid part two. The EP was mainly about me being kind of hurt and other relationships being kind of hurt. And so this one is more so on the tone of, of I want I want you back for other relationships. So those two songs are in the works plus more. So I have more tunes on the way. I'm going to say mid-August, you guys should be expecting something from me. I'm going to say this too. Any podcast radio show man you hear this interview or you just hear about the name marjan please interview her because i'm telling you this name is not even just a cool name but it's a cool artist <laughs> with a story and i'm telling you i just got a strong feeling that uh you're going places big time and i'm i'm glad that i Folks radio was able to get your story because i think you have something that what people would say they put that stamp on it and say it's official, it's special, and it's something worth paying attention oh my to. God. So I'm, I'm just I telling you, get ready. You. No, no, no. I'm I just, am. I'm ready. <laughs> when you see truth, you see truth. And when I see what you're doing in the music industry, this is something that the music industry needs. And I'm not going to preach because that's not my thing. I'm just the talk show host. But I'm going to preach a little bit and say whatever you believe you can do, Put in God hands and watch him bless it because I'm telling you, you're going places with your music. And I just want to give you the floor because we got, you know, pay our bills and uh, wrap up the show. But I'm going to give you the floor. Someone's listening right now and they are trying to find their purpose. They're trying to find their passion. Right. What would you mm -hmm. say to that person to help them gain that clarity to live their best life? Oh, we as a people, we all we all are here for a purpose, um, and I feel like the best way to find that purpose, of course, is talk to the Creator, um, align yourself with God, um, get to know Him, get to know Him, know who He is, know who Jesus is, know the life um, that Jesus lived, um, because nothing else could be constant. But when you look at who Jesus was as a character, um, as a man as a provider, um, you can't go wrong. So I just want to say to those who are looking for their purpose, just pray and, and talk to God, read your Bible, um, and just focus in on what brings out the fire in you. What's your passion? Find that one thing. Even though it may not make you the money that you're making in your current job, 
don't don't worry about that because it will come. Like you said earlier, um, God will bless you, um, those who are faithful. So, yeah. Man, you got a little side preaching you too, but I know I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to preach. I'm not no, 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 no. It's good. It, I just had to get that out. Yeah, for for the young people, we call it keeping it real. And the funny keeping thing is, the funniest thing, I'm not young no more. So for the youngest out there, whatever y'all say, y'all just email me the the training words that y'all use. But yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> that little age gap, right? But yeah, in all seriousness. You are doing something that I once again would like to say that music industry, I hope I hope they will pay attention and I hope everyone who hears this will follow you and book you for more interviews and, and just more just anything. Just to give you more exposure because I think you're a hidden talent. I heard it, I heard the track waiting and I can't wait to hear other stuff because you definitely have a passion for what you do and that's the difference between people who make it and people who don't. People either have passion and they work for it or people get scared and they limit themselves because they compare themselves to everybody else. Your chapter three has nothing to do with someone else's chapter 300. The only difference is, is time. So you got to spend more time in your gift, more time in your development. Cause like college, you went to college, you can't take certain courses Mm -hmm. without the previous course. It's a prerequisite that you have to get through to get to the next level. So for you getting to the next level, what? Is that one thing you want people to know when they hear your song? What's that one thing you you hope that they leave when they hear you? Um, that I that again, like you said, that I took that next step. That I wasn't afraid. That even though I was afraid before, that I put that all on God and just went for it. That's what I, that's what I really want people to know because I don't think you understand how scared I was to do any of this. And that's been a, a big factor in my life that has been limited to me, I feel like, um, from, you know, reaching next levels. Like you said, you have your prerequisites. I would always take the prereqs, <laughs> but when it came to take taking those courses after, I didn't. But now, um, again, even through my music, even though I may not touch on that, I may be talking about something completely different, but when you listen to um, Marjan, just know uh, it's all love. Uh, and, and motivation, and I want you to be able to do the same. Well, don't forget that name, Marjan. Write it down. Write it down. If you can't spell, I got you. It's Write M- it down. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's M A R J O N. So, once again, how can people reach you? Because I know they want to follow you after this. Okay, so I have a Twitter. I have an Instagram. My Instagram is underscore Mary No Jane. That's underscore M A R Y N O J A N E. Underscore Mary No Jane on Instagram. And on Twitter, it would be Mary underscore underscore No Jane. So Twitter, M A R Y underscore underscore N O J A N E. Those are my two platforms that I'm really uh, active on. So, yep, that's how you can reach me. Well, you've been listening to I Am Refocus Radio. We want to extend our thanks and gratitude to Marjan taking time out of her busy schedule, coming out the studio to talk to us some breaking news of what's going on in her music career and her music and future music. And we want to say thank you for being on here today. Of course. I truly appreciate y'all so much. Much love to everyone who's listening, and I pray you guys stay safe and have a wonderful day. Well, everyone out there, what she just said, take some of that, write it down, share it, pass it, because that's value, and that's something this world needs right now, especially during these times. So be out there, live your dream, keep grinding, keep pushing, keep moving, and keep God first, stay focused, and peace. Thanks for listening to I Am Refocused Radio brought to you by Documation. Documation is a full service technology solutions company that provides IT, print, and software managed services. Headquartered in San Antonio, Documation has been serving customers across Texas for nearly 30 years. Visit Mation.com today. 
Hi, San Antonio. Need a barber? Visit our good friend, Rico Rodriguez, the owner of Rockefeller's Barbershop in San Antonio, Texas, 1733 Babcock Road, and book your appointment today by calling 210 782 5188. 